Hip hop moves people because of the, it's the voice. And the voice, we forget, we get caught up on language, but the voice is also an instrument. And when you have a hip hop beat and you have this percussive situation going on with the music, the human voice almost becomes another instrument and the musicality of the voice adds something and if the performer is good at communicating and expressing emotions and ideas, you will feel them. That's why we can listen to a song in Wolof, not understand it, and like it. That's why we can, we can be entertained by these different kinds of arts. And I think hip hop, because it's, it's rooted in communication, it's rooted in standing up, it's rooted in honoring yourself, it's rooted in representing where you're from, no matter where you're from, and it's about celebrating who you are. I, f I just forgot, I didn't start with my disclaimer. When I say hip hop, I'm talking about 2%, not the 2% that most people get to see on television and radio. What mainstream radio and television shows of hip hop represents exactly 2.2% of what hip hop is. The other 98% around the world doesn't get exposure in mainstream media. There's dance, there's visual art, there is vocal percussion and beatboxing as a form of art, there is the rap, there is the DJing, there are all these things that happen to hip hop music and culture that express spirituality, that express religion, that express um, feelings and emotions, the love songs, uh, celebration of one's parents, um, that tells true, authentic stories from the heart that does not get represented. So sometimes when we talk about hip hop diplomacy, we think we're talking about Lil Wayne, or Jay-Z, or 50 Cent. That is not what we're talking about. We're talking about the art and the culture, and that's why you can send artists who people have never heard of, and the audience responds to them. Because when it is an authentic expression of hip hop music and culture, it's not about fame. It's about feeling. It's about music. It's about the song. And I think that's why the, the hip hop diplomacy work. It also works because it reaches across generations. So we also get confused because we think of hip hop as a teeny bopper phenomenon and it reaches the young. This is true. It does reach the youth. But hip hop started in the mid 1970s here in the US, all right? It started some, you know, somewhere in the 80s in some other countries, in the late 80s in other countries. Even with that, hip hop is an adult. Now it may behave as a juvenile delinquent on MTV, but it's an adult now. And so you will have people who have their children at the concerts with them. You will have people doing songs with their sons and their daughters now. In Brazil, there was a grandmother, a daughter, and the granddaughter rapping together. Now, unfortunately, we live in a, in a country and a culture where, you know, that doesn't happen. We barely sing together anymore, which I think is going to be my next retirement job, fighting for the arts, because I think that we should be singing before every meeting. But that's just me. I'm a quirky poet.